Hi everyone. Welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. Today we are going to discuss about the muscular system and we are going to see an overview of the muscular system. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. We are going to see an introduction about the muscular system followed by the microanatomy of muscle fiber. Then we will be studying about the functions of muscle. We will also study about the functions of muscle movement followed by the characteristics that are common to a muscle tissue. So let us see the introduction to the muscular system. Muscles cause the bones and support structures to move by alternating between the contraction and relaxation. So by alternate contraction and relaxation, your muscles enable the bone and structures to move. The bones and joints alone do not produce movement. So just by using your bones and joints alone, you can't produce a movement. You need muscles. The human body has around 600 individual muscles. You can see over here the overall muscular system a human has. So there are 600 individual muscles for a normal human. So this is the microanatomy of a muscle fiber. So you'll be having a muscle which can be further magnified to find your muscle cell bundle, individual muscle cells, microfibrils and which is further magnified to observe that you have filaments. So first your muscle is attached to the bone by tendon and the muscle on magnification you can find the following parts epimysium, perimysium and endomysium. In endomysium this part is magnified and that is known as your fascicle, your fascicle is further magnified to observe that it has blood vessels and muscle fibers. The covering of your muscle fiber is your sarcolemma, which on further magnification you can find that you have sarcoplasmic reticulum and nucleus. On magnifying your sarcoplasmic reticulum, you can find that a muscle has small strands of myofibril. So these myofibrils on magnification you can find thick and thin filaments. So this is the hierarchy what you get on magnifying your muscles. So muscle on magnification you can find your fascicles and your fascicles on magnification you can find your muscle fibers. Muscle fibers on magnification is myofibrils. So these things combine to form a muscle. Here you can clearly see that an individual muscle strand is formed 
by a muscle bundle which has a fascicle and the fascicles are made up of myofibrils where your myofibrils are made up of thick and thin filaments next we are going to see the micro anatomy of a muscle fiber so what you are viewing over here is a muscle fiber so a muscle fiber is made up of thick and thin myofilaments a muscle fiber has the covering as sarcoplasmic reticulum and a terminal cistern the outside covering of a muscle fiber is the sarcolemma inside your muscle fiber you have mitochondria over here you can see that and nuclei these structures over here is known as triad and these strands that is inside your triad is nothing but your thick and thin myofilaments which forms your muscle fiber so this is a muscle fibers micro anatomy next we are going to see about muscle cells the myocytes are called as the muscle fibers the cell membrane of the muscle fiber is the sarcoplasmic reticulum that is bordered by the plasma membrane which is known as your sarcolemma so your sarcolemma forms the outside covering of the muscle fiber sarcoplasm is nothing but the cytoplasm of the cell of the muscle cell myofibrils are the long structures that you can find in your sarcoplasm these filaments of myofibrils has the arrangement in such a way that it produces striations as you can see over here now we are going to see the microscopic view of thin myofilament that you have seen in your muscle fiber your muscle fiber is made up of thin and thick myofilaments in this thin myofilament has a structure as this two strands twisted on one another this portion is further enlarged as this so the two strands that are spinning around each other has the structure as this where you have the active site actin molecules tropomyosin and troponin so this is your thin filament and the strand 
on the whole is known as your acting strength next we are going to see the thick myofilament the microscopic structure of your thick myofilament looks like this so this portion has been enlarged to get this one if you see you have a part known as myosin head which can move forward and backward by hinge and this portion of the myosin molecule is the myosin tail your myosin or the myofilament thick myofilament has atp and actin binding site next we are going to see the basic functions of a muscle a muscle has the ability to contract permitting your human body to perform various functions such as movement stability control of body openings and passages heat production so these are some of the basic functions that the muscles in a human body does it helps us to move to have a stable body and it controls the body openings and the heat production of the body how do muscles help us in stability the muscles hold the bones tightly together so by holding the bones tightly together they stabilize the joints whereas in your vertebrae small muscles hold the vertebrae together hence they stabilize the spinal column hence the muscles help us to increase the stability of a body how do muscles help to control the body openings and passages if you see muscles like your sphincters are wall like structures and they control the movement of substances in and out of the passages example your urethral sphincter prevents or allows urination so you can see the sphincter urethral muscle over here which controls the movement of substances in and out of the passages how do muscles help in heat production in a human body the heat is released with muscle contraction and it helps to maintain a normal temperature for the human in his body if you move your body your muscles will help to make your body warm if you are cold so that is how the muscle can produce heat to make your body warm
Next we are going to see the functions of muscle movement. For skeletal muscles that are attached to bones by tendons and cross joints. So when they contract the bones will move. So that is how your skeletal muscles help in movement. Whereas smooth muscles which are found in your organ walls will produce movement of organ contents by contractions and relaxations. So that enables the movement of organ walls by the smooth muscles. The cardiac muscle produces atrial ventricular contractions. This will pump the blood from the heart into the blood vessels. So thus the cardiac muscle produces the movement that is required to pump the blood from the heart into the blood vessels. Next we are going to see the characteristics that are common to muscle tissue. Some of the characteristics include contractility that is ability of the muscle to shorten. Next we have extensibility that is the ability of the muscle to lengthen. Followed by extensibility we have elasticity which is nothing but the ability of a muscle to return to its normal size. Next we have atrophy that is wasting of muscle tissue. Followed by that you have hypertrophy that is the increase in the size of the muscle tissue. So these are some of the common characteristics to a muscle tissue. The control of your muscle tissue is by either nerve stimuli and the muscle tissue is fed with its nutrients by small blood vessels which is known as the capillaries. Thank you so much for joining GTEC on Muscular System Overview. Hope you would have found this tutorial useful.